You're listening to Blairsville Football on Lucky 106.3 FM. The opening kickoff is taken by Will Wilson at the 25-yard line, and he will be hit at the 30-yard line by Joe Gaston and driven back there. So we are underway in this evening's contest. The Bobcats moving right to left on your, uh, through your living room this evening. Thanks for Shetty leading them out of the huddle. Perchetti with Greg Kunkel, the lone setback, and the pitch is to Kunkel coming to the near side. Cuts the corner across the 30-yard line to the 35, and finally run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Coming over to make the stop for the Stingers was Ray Vocal. So a nice start is the first, first and 10 Bobcats now from their own 45-yard line. Perchetti pitches the other way. This is Brian Christopher looking to turn it upfield. Zigzags his way across midfield and down to the 48-yard line of the Stingers. So a gain of six on the play. The ball game so far for the Bobcats, and Freshetti will set his team. Freshetti gives the ball to Greg Kunkel, and Kunkel is down to the 44-yard line, and that ought to be very close to a Bobcat first down. Ray Vocal in on the tackle for the Stingers, and I believe that that will be a four on the ground. Running behind Big Eye. And Sokolosa and Brzezanski on the left side. Now the backs are split behind Perchetti. Fakes the inside hit up, gives it to Christopher, and he is going to be hit and driven back to the 49-yard line. Coming in to make the stop was Jeff Savista. And Morgan also in on the stop. So a loss of three, and that will bring up now a second down. Bill Bobcats with 9.58 to go in the first period. Opening possession, the Bobcats took it at their own 29-yard line. If you remember last week, the Bobcats had a small problem with uh, taking three delay of game penalties. We'll see if they can get that corrected this week. Freshetti leads them out of the huddle again. Sets Christopher in motion in the near side, inside hand off the Kunkel, back across the original line of scrimmage, and all the way down to the 41-yard line. Wrapped up there on the play. Bison will be the flankers. They'll deploy to the right side. Brzezanski, the tight end, is split to the left. Freshetti calling signals at third and seven from the 42. Pitches back to Kunkel. And Kunkel turns the ball upfield and is down to the 36-yard line. That'll be shy of the first time by about two yards. So we'll bring up a fourth and two for the Blairsville Bobcats. And a four, it'll be fourth and three at the 30. We'll call a three as they'll mark it at the 37-yard line. 8.39 to go now in the first period. To the right, Clawson and Stiles to the left. And put Christopher in the slot to the near side. Kunkel is the lone setback. The pitch is back to Kunkel, looking to turn up field. A penalty flag goes down. Kunkel was near the first down, but I believe this play is going to come back on a holding call. Tripped up on the play by Aaron Hodak. But Rich Stocklosa, I believe, will be called for the hold, or possibly Brian Christopher. And it is, the call is holding against the Bobcats now. We'll see whether or not they had enough for the first down. I don't believe they did. He is short by about an eighth of an inch, so the ball will go over on down for their first possession. Out of the huddle, Eric Hankinson. And Hankinson gives the ball to the second back through. That is Chad Fairman. And Fairman will get up to the 40-yard line of the Bobcats where Dwight Herman will bring him down. The 41-yard line. Hankinson leads them out of the huddle. From the wing T formation. Fakes to the first man through. Now gives it to the second back. That's Jason Wells. Wells around the corner. Gets to the outside. Down the sidelines. And Hopkins will knock him out of bounds at the Blairsville 43-yard line. 
So Hopkins makes the touchdown saving tackle. Wells was able to get to the outside. From that wing T formation again, the fake is to Wells. The ball is loose, and Dwight Herman has it. Dwight Herman recovers from the Bobcats at their own 46 yard line, and that's where the Bobcats will put it in play, first and 10. They fake the ball to Fairman, wanted to give it to Wells, but Hankinson left it on the run. First and 10. Pitches the ball to Kunkel coming to the near side, but we have whistles and a penalty flag. Legal procedure against the Blairsville Bobcats, so that will make it first and 15 at the 41 yard line. Bobcats coming out of the huddle, and the backs are split. Perchetti will throw, gets good protection, throwing out. They were looking for Brzezanski at the 45 yard line, and the pass is incomplete. Drawing the coverage was Ray Vocal for the Stingers. So that'll bring up a second down now and 15. So the first, Perchetti leads them out of the huddle now. Wilson flanked to the right, Styles to the left. The back through in an eye formation. It's a draw play to Christopher. Christopher turns up field back to the original line of scrimmage. That's the 46 yard line. Aaron Hodak in on the stop. Give him five on the play, make it now third down. Five. Now barking out the signal. Perchetti rolling to the near side. Protection breaks down. Screen pass to Christopher. And Christopher is run out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. Well shy of the first down. So the uh, Bobcats will be forced to punt. And Saklosa is in to punt for the Bobcats. Chad Fairman will deploy deep to receive. Saklosa with a good snap, and he kicks the air out of the ball. Rich Saklosa drives Fairman all the way back to the 18-yard line. Fairman trying to run that way, but no sorry. He is going to be brought down on the play by Corey Bracken and Dwight Herman. Fairman will lead them out of the huddle again. And the give is to Jason Wells coming to the near side, runs over Eric Demon and gets out to the 22 yard line. Gain of four, make it second down and six. And now Brian Miller is flanked to the right out of this wing tee. It's the wing back counter to Mike Golemski, and Golemski will be all the way out to the 45-yard line of the Blairsville Bobcats. So Galantine will get it out. Of Blairsville sporting and school events for over 40 years. Best wishes to the Bobcats and a special tip in the area for over 40 years with love and compassion in their time of need. The Richard L. Shoemaker Funeral Home is proud to say they backed the Bobcats in 92. The Richard L. Shoemaker Funeral Home, 49 North Walnut Street, Blairsville. And back at Blairsville, Jason Wells takes the pitch, goes around in. Single man to the right is Ken Steer, dual, dual backs rather, and a wing back behind Hackinson. Hackinson gives it to the second back through, that is Buck Morgan, and Morgan is all the way down to the 30-yard line. So Buck Morgan brought down by Kunkel at the 30-yard line, so a couple of big runs on this. Fingers in business, second and six. Hankinson gives the ball to Jason Wells, and Wells is into the secondary. And finally wrestled to the turf at the 24-yard line by Greg Kunkel. They are all the way down now to the Bobcat 24, third down and two. Fake the Wells, give the ball to the first back two. That is Buck Morgan, and Morgan is into the secondary and into the end zone. 
for a touchdown. Buck Morgan with a 24-yard run. The center 18-yard line, 82 yards in seven plays. Well, 33-yard run was the biggie. And now on the attempt at conversion is Dan Speck, a left-footed boot from the post to the right. The kick is up, and it is no good wide to the right. So Speck in favor of the Marion Center Singers with 3.31 to go. And we'll have to see how important that extra point is. Receiving position. And Dan Speck puts the ball in the air. We'll come down to Brian Christopher at the 22-yard line. The return is to the right. Christopher trying to get a wall, turns the ball upfield. And is run out of bounds at the 29-yard line by Joe Gaston. So Gaston making the defensive play, and the Bobcats will begin their third offensive series, the Quad A South. Single back, it is Kunkel, takes the pitch from Prochetti, turns the ball upfield, gets a good block from Mike Clausen, and is all the way up to the 37-yard line. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down, but they've had good success tonight. And they'll give him a very good spot, so he'll get the first down. They've had very good success pitching the ball out to... The pitch is to Christopher. Christopher coming to the near side. And Christopher will be hauled down at the 40-yard line by Joe Gaston. Gaston read the play very well. Christopher never got the corner and did a good job just to get the ball out to the 40-yard line. So we'll give him two on the play, make it Leading them out of the huddle is Greg Prochetti. They'll go from the eye formation this time with dual receivers to the far side. And they give it to Kunkel up the middle. A good running room for Greg. Almost 10 yards on the play out to the 48-yard line of the Blairsville Bobcats. So the, the offensive line that Abdatori said needed to blow up with some holes for the Bobcat runner does at the 47-yard line. From the eye formation. Two slot men, the pitch is to Kunkel coming to the near side. And Kunkel is to the midfield and maybe the 49-yard line of the Singers before he is finally brought down on the play by Aaron Hodak. They followed Clawson in the slot that time. For and Morgan. Buck Morgan gave them a 7-0 lead. Freshetti running the option to the near side. Turns the ball upfield. Good running room for Greg Freshetti. And he is all the way down to the 43-yard line of the Singers before Buck Morgan finally ran him down. And an excellent decision that time by Greg Freshetti. They were running and the pitch man was for a moment about whether he was going to pitch. It helped him a little bit because it made it look like good success running near the end. Freshetti to Kunkel, straight up the middle and that's tough sledding there. Gary Stewart in on the stop, also coming up to help make the tackle with Jason Wells. He just joined us. It's a seven nothing lead for Marion Center. They went 82 yards in seven plays, capped off by a 24 yard Buck Morgan touchdown. The extra point was missed and it's six nothing. This is Kunkel coming to the near side. Penalty flags are down and Kunkel is also down at the line of scrimmage. Dragged down on the play by 10-yard penalty. It occurred somewhere in the interior of the line. The penalty will move the ball all the way back to the Bobcat territory, back to their own 49. Make it second and 19 with 10 seconds to go. We'll see if they get this play off. Three seconds to go, and unlikely they will. And that's the end of the first period of play with the score. Marion Center 6. This year, nothing will make your holiday season easier or more delicious. Second down 19. Freshetti will lead them out of the huddle. Mike Clawson is flanked to the near side, just fouled to the far side. And the backs are Kunkel. And Freshetti dropping back to pass. Heavy pressure, and he will drop the football and then fall on it back at the Blairsville 46 yard line. So that'll bring up a third down. Looked like a straight drop that time. Bobcats now with Christopher, the lone setback. It's tailback. Dropping back, looking to throw is Prochetti. Laying the ball out for Mike Clawson. Clawson tried to run under it, but incomplete at the 35-yard line. The pass just a step too far for Clawson. 
Braschetti tried to, lo to lob it up there and let Michael run under it. And, and dropping back in punt formation is Rich Stocklosa. Stocklosa gets the snap. Weak side pressure, line drive, kick by Rich. It'll hit at the 30 and take a Blairsville bounce to the 20, the 15, and out of bounds at the 13-yard line ahead of Chad Fairman. So what didn't look like a pretty kick gets the job done for Rich Stocklosa. First and 10 for Marion Center now. And the give is to the inside back. That is Mike Gallantine. And Gallantine has the first down out at the Blairsville 23 yard line. Marion Center on their own 18 yard line, moving it out to the, or rather the 13 yard line, moving out to the 23. This is Wells coming to the near side. Wells into the secondary, turns the corner at the 40, 45 across midfield and run out of bounds by Mike Clawson at the Blairsville bench at the 49 yard line. So Wells gets to the out. He has provided coverages to best meet the requirements of policy holders. Al Cavassa can cover you for farm, automobile, business, life, pensions, mobile homes, motorcycle, and hospitalization. For peace of mind, review your current insurance with the Alcovasic Agency, Market Street, Blairsville, or Shaw Insurance, Route 422, Alderton. The Alcovasic Insurance Agency for all forms of insurance. And on first down, Wells takes the carry, and he is dropped by Jason Brzezanski at the 50-yard line, so a loss of one on the play. Hankinson pitches the ball out to the right side. This is Joe Gaston with a Gaston turns the corner and is down to the 44-yard line of Blairsville. Run out of bounds over there by Eric Eamon. And DJ Doak. Carrion center 13. Big defensive play here for the Bobcats. Can they make a big stand? Hankinson calling the signal, gives the ball to Wells, and Wells runs right into Mike Hauser and is dropped finally by D.J. Doak, and a penalty flag will go down at the line of scrimmage, and we'll see what that penalty was all about. Hauser nailed him, and it's a personal foul against the Bobcats. And quite honestly, couldn't see where that occurred. It occurred late. From the wing T formation, Eric Hankinson. Gives the ball to Wells, and Wells runs right into Jeff Hauser at the line of scrimmage, and Hauser brings him down with some help from Dwight Herman. Hankinson has yet to throw the football. Single receiver to the right, the wing T-man is also to the right. And the give is an inside hand off to Mike Gallantine, and Gallantine is into the secondary and all the way down to the Bobcat 21-yard line where Eric Eamon finally runs him down with help from Wes Hopkins. Now Corey Bracken checks into the lineup. Season here at Blairsville Stadium. Entertaining Marion Center this evening and Berlin next week. Third down and three. Third down and three. And another key play in this drive which started on the 13-yard line. The wing back is to the right. The give is to Wells, going that way. Wells looks to turn the corner, coughs up the football again. It's loose on the turf. They'll pile for it. We'll have to see who has it. I believe the Bobcats have it. We're waiting for the preliminary indication to see. Wells was hit by Mike Clawson over there. And it appears the Stingers have regained possession. Yes, they have. And they get the first down on the play. Brian Douglas, the right guard, was able to recover the ball. Mike Colossum with a big hit. 17 yard line, so a bad break there for the Bobcats. The give is to the second back through, that's Mike Gallatine. Gallatine is to the corner and to the end zone, but hold everything because there's a penalty flag on the play and this one is coming back. So Mike Gallatine takes the pitch and got to the outside corner now. A first down and 20 and move the ball all the way back to the team. Jason Smith now in at the down line position. Like Playing where Singapore's usually plays. They give it to Gallantine again, and Gallantine is down to the 22-yard line where Styles rides him down. 
with some help from okay, Greg Kunkel and Corey Bracken. Receiver to the right. The wing back is also to that side. Hankinson will look to throw, get plenty of protection. Now he's level, throws the ball into the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. They were looking for Brooke Fairman down there, but the pass was incomplete. Down at 15 for the Stingers. Wing back to the near side, dual back. Receiver to the near side. They give it to Wells coming to the near side. Wells runs into Jess Hauser and Dwight Herman, and they'll bring him down at the original line of scrimmage, the 17-yard line. In the first half, 6 nothing. The Stingers lead the Bobcats, and Bobcat football continues on Lucky FM. Two, Bentley Development offers continued support of the Blairsville football team and all the other activities of our neighborhood children. The big fourth down play is a handoff to Buck Morgan, and he gets down to about the 13-yard line. That will be shy of the first down. Jeff Hauser rode him down. 6-0 Marion Center with 6.28 to go. And now the Bobcats with trip receivers to the right and Brzezanski to the left. Kunkel takes the pitch and comes to the near side. Kunkel out across the 15-yard line and maybe to the 17 where Joe Gaston brings him down. Hodek also in on the stop. Perchetti drops back and looks to throw. The pass is complete to Mike Clawson, and Clawson turns it out to the 18-yard line. And Clawson will be brought down there, shy of the first down. At the 18. The ball is on the 18-yard line. And Perchetti fakes the ball to Christopher, throws it out, completes to Kunkel, and Kunkel has it at the 30-yard line for a Blairsville first down. To the game on the way in. Which is missed so far, Bill, was a Buck Morgan 24-yard touchdown run, and other than that, it's been a tale of the defenses. We are first and 10 from the 31 now, and Perchetti will drop back and look to throw. Throwing long, looking for Bill Wilson. Wilson has it in and out of his hands at the 45-yard line. Wilson coming all the way across field that time, Ben. And Perchetti laid the ball out there nicely. Looked like Wilson had a chance to catch it, and uh, it had a step on his defender and just not able to haul it in. So the pass falls incomplete. That'll bring up a second. They shot themselves in the foot. Now, it was a case on the last series where, where Marion Center uh, had a chance to go in and, and not able to do it. Single back this time is Greg Kunkel. Kunkel takes the handoff and gets to the line of scrimmage and nothing else that's coming up to trip him up was Aaron Hodak on the play. That's a play that's worked for them so often during the season, uh, just going off that left. Brian Christopher is the tailback. The slot man is Kunkel and dual receivers one to each side. Braschetti will Fake the draw to Christopher, gets weak side protection and is dropped. Coming in for the weak side was Aaron Hodak. And Greg never saw him. No, and uh, he wasn't the only one in there. Hodak can see a fumble. Yeah, absolutely, when you don't know the uh, defender's coming up on you. Fourth and 17, and Rich Stocklosa will be in the punt again. The big sophomore booms the ball high in the air again. It will hit at the 50 and take a Blairsville bounce back to the 42-yard line. Keeps rolling. Mike Clawson escorts it all the way back to the 37. The so Stocklosa. Hankinson will lead them out of the huddle. From the wing T, barking the signal. Gives the ball to Wells, coming to the near side. Big hole for Wells. Gets to the outside at the 50, the 45, has Clawson to beat at the 30, and Mike Clawson runs him out of bounds at the 25-yard line and throws him into the majorette section where they'll all scatter. Run on certain, on certain plays. That time, uh, picking up what could be about 33 yards on the play. Hankinson inside handoff to Mike Gallantine, and Gallantine has the first down, down to the 15-yard line. If he doesn't have it, it'll be very short, very close. 
the 16-yard line. Inside hand off to Wells. Wells runs right into a host of defensive players led by Jason Smith and Jess Hauser. <laughs> Jess Hauser wearing number double zero tonight. Also at fullback a little bit and a tailback, so they wanted to have a number that would be a multi-purpose number. Second and seven, Hankinson pitches to Wells, needs to get around the corner, gets a good block, and is into the end zone for a touchdown. Eric Hyman had a chance for it, but he was blocked out of the play very neatly Absolutely. by Chris Mantini. Mantini made a great block on it. If you remember, Dan Speck's kick was wide to the left on the last touchdown. They will indeed go for two at 1.29 to go. Hankinson barks out the signal, gives the ball to the second back through. That is Mike Galantine, and Galantine is stopped short of the goal line. So the conversion is no good, and that makes the score 12-0. And Bill, you have to believe that the Bobcats get the offense going there right in this football game. Oh, absolutely, uh, especially stopping that play. Christopher, Clawson, and John Kunkelman will drop back in the deep receiving position for Blairsville. A high kick will come down to Christopher. Rather, Wilson will take it for Christopher at the 25, and out to the 30 and maybe the 32-yard line. Mike Straw will come up to make the tackle there, assisted by Shane Kunkel. So the Bobcats will put it in play with 1.23 to go, and we'll see if they'll go to the air, Bill. I would suspect they would. We've seen them in, in other games uh, where they've had a decent uh, two-minute offense under two minutes, throwing the football. Prochetti uh, doing a pretty good job. Dual receivers, Prochetti straight drop, and he is going to be dropped himself by Chad Fairman all the way back at the 26 or the 24-yard line. And Greg didn't even have a chance to get back and set up that time. No, and again, it was a case where uh, Fairman wasn't the only person who was in there to, to make the stop. There were two or three other defenders. Bershetti, quick pass to Styles out in the flat. Styles gets a good block from Brzezanski, run out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So that gets it back near the original line of scrimmage with 58 seconds left. Greg made sure he got rid of the football quickly that time. One step They back. marked the ball right on the 30-yard line. Prochetti will throw again. Straight drop. It's a blitz. It's a screen pass to Kunkel. He's got four men in front of him. Cuts back away from them now. Kunkel has open field. 45. Gets the block. 40. 30. It's a foot race to the end zone. at the 20. The 10. And finally run out of bounds by the last man to get him, Joe Gaston, at the five-yard line. And Vince, Joe Gaston was the only player who had a chance to run him out of bounds. You're absolutely right. And that time, setting up the screen beautifully. They let the defenders in. They got the uh, the dump pass off to uh, Kunkel. He got a couple of blocks right at the line of scrimmage. and uh, Two yards on the play. That'll make it first and goal from the eight. And Bill, I believe the Bobcats will now want to talk to Bill and I will be right back. This season at Foodland, look for Stroman. Uh, but they get the big 62-yard pass play to uh, Greg Kunkel, setting them up uh, inside the 10. And they've had very good success with that sweep play from this position. We'll see if they run it again. Prochetti will elect to throw. Gets good protection this time. Throws over the middle. It's too high for Styles at the goal line. Got, for, for, got pressure late from Mike Gallantine. Second down. Tries to get the ball into the end zone. 38 seconds to play in the first half. The backs are split. Prochetti will throw again. Lobbing it out there for Clawson. It's too far and incomplete. Michael had a step on the defender over there. Joe Gaston. And there's a flag on the play as well, Vince. Thrown right around the line of scrimmage, and it's just what you didn't want to see. Maybe some of the fans down in goal from the 17-yard line, although this could help the Bobcats a little bit because it gives them a little more room to operate now. The field's a little longer. Three receivers to the left. Christopher, the tailback. He'll come in motion to the near side. Bruschetti will throw over the middle, and the pass is taken by Mike Clawson for a touchdown. And a beautiful pass by Bruschetti. On the quick hitter, and the Bobcats through the end zone. I'll tell you, that was a great job by Mike Clawson, too. He caught that ball in, in heavy traffic right over the middle at that little slant pad. He was in. And the Russian roulette wheel of kickers spins around to Jess Hauser, who will kick tonight. At the post to the right, the ball is down. Hauser's kick is high enough, and boy, is it long enough. All the way down in the catcher on the board, and it's 12-7, and a big, big, big touchdown there, Bill. Oh, absolutely, uh, for where they started and uh, setting up Blairsville for that touchdown. So good job all around by the offense. 28 seconds are left. 
Hauser set to kick off. And it's the onside kick. It will bounce high in the air. Loose. Still loose. And picked up by Mike Wilson. Or rather, Bill Wilson. And Wilson has it with 21 seconds to go at the 45-yard line. It looks like a jump ball, Bill. It did. Uh, the ball rolled around. It came to the Marion Center defender. It was batted up into the air. And I don't, you're right. It was like a volleyball game. They were just batting it up and to see who could get it. It came back to Bill Wilson, and he made the reception and sets Blairsville up at uh, the Marion Center 45. First and 10, the Bobcats, 21 seconds to go, and I believe they're out of timeout. So they'll crank it up now. Freschetti back to throw, throws over the middle and behind Jeff Stiles at the 35-yard line with 17 seconds. Lawson and Stiles is the receivers. Brzezanski the tight end. The backs are split. Freschetti to throw. Good protection this time. Now it starts to break down. He'll heave it long. Lawson has a step on his defender, but the pass is incomplete, out of bounds. Mike Lawson has just turned. He's going for the football rather than trying to bat it away. Third and 10 from the 45-yard line now. Three receivers to the right with nine seconds to go. Perchetti throwing long, and Stiles has it! Stiles has it at the five! And he's run out of bounds with one second left. <laughs> one second oh, wow. left on the clock, and Stiles is out of bounds at the five-yard line. The ball was tipped by Fence with one second left. And got down to about the six-yard line with one second left. Hauser on to attempt a, an extra, or rather a field goal at the post to the right, which is almost an extra point. It'll be a 23-yard field goal. Rollins down, the kick is up, and it is spinning outside the goal post and no good. Woo! So the half ends at the end of the first half of play. The score of the Bobcats 12, or rather the Marion Center Stingers 12, the Bobcats 7. Chestnut Ridge Realty is proud to back the Bobcats in 1992. And Chestnut Ridge Realty is also proud to be known as the Houndless Company, a state and commercial multi-list company, and also they offer home marketing services. That means when it comes to buying or selling their real estate, they get results for their clients. Chestnut Ridge Realty, 9 West Market Street, Blairsville. Best of luck, Bobcats in 92. Great food at a terrific price. Get the special now at Gino's Pizza of Blairsville. Get two large pizzas for $10.99 and just $1.79 per ton. They were down, and uh, who, who knew if they were out or not, but uh, down 12 nothing, and to get the football with them. <laughs> <laughs> that was attacked by a moth. That's the, the first time in the booth. Uh, <laughs> the kickoff is short, and they'll pile on it again, and I think the Bobcats have it. Now, there's a gutsy play right there. The Bobcats are jumping up and down saying they have the football, and yes, they do. Trying to pick up, build the number of the person who fell on the football. Marty Foreman. Marty Foreman gets the ball. So Marty Foreman falls on the football. You talk about an unexpected play to give you a lift here to start the second half. What a gutsy call to, to try the onside kick, and Marty Foreman comes up with it for Blairsville. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. Trips to the right. Perchetti will throw the screen past the Stiles. It's in and out of his hands, and incomplete. There was some concern whether or not that was a, a pass or a fumble. That was a play where Stiles had uh, just taken one step back from the line. Honey, and twice they've been successful, and sometimes you see teams go through an entire season without being able to do that. Perchetti at second and 10 from the 47, calling the signals. Marion Center showing blitz. He'll pitch the ball to Kunkel. Greg Kunkel, good running room all the way down to the 39-yard line. Coming over to make the stop was Chad Fairman. He'll be shy of the first down. And I'll tell you, if Marion Center doesn't make the stop there, it's, uh, that's big yardage for Kunkel. Uh, they open up a nice hole for him off the right side. It was a quick pitch he got. Side line, dual receivers. Well, now Brzezanski will go in tight, so the receiver to each side. Christopher. Slips down, lost the football, gets it back at the 38-yard line. And that was just a, a case of a good defensive play that time by Marion Center. Christopher got up to the line of scrimmage. The hole he'd wanted to run through was closed. Or rather, the 38-yard line, they need to get to the 36. Perchetti pitches the ball to Kunkel. Flags are down. Kunkel has the apparent first down. Fumbles the football, and Marion Center recovers. Marion Center recovering at the 39-yard line, but let's see what the flags are. 
This could turn out to be a very interesting play. So I think they called him down. I think so, too. So there is no fumble. And if the penalty is not against Marion Center, it is an illegal shift, however, against the Bobcats. He was very close to the first down. I don't know if he had it or not. It came out before he was on the ground. And it, it was indeed short. So they'll decline the penalty, and the ball will go over on down. be a severe blow. Another lineman going down for the Bobcats. The trainer's attending to him. Don't think it's anything that probably would keep him out of the football game. Hankinson fakes the well, gives the ball to the first back through. That is Buck Morgan. And Morgan is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and drops for no, no gain. Jess Hauser in on the stop. Also in was DJ Doak. That's the kind of defensive stand they need. In Tackle in the Appalachian Conference. I'll tell you, uh, Dwight has had a terrific year. He had a great game last week. And now Hankinson will get over center and don't, doesn't like the look of things. And I will be right back. Hello. Picked up no yardage on that first down play and then uh, came out to the line of scrimmage. And, and as you said, uh, Hankinson didn't like what he saw in the Blairsville defense. Doc Losa is out of the defensive alignment right now. They'll give the ball to Wells coming to the near side, and he will be brought down as Hauser. And at the same time that Wells goes down, a penalty marker goes down, too. That's a good sign. That's a play that uh, had picked up good yardage for Marion Center in the first half and uh, goes nowhere this time. Plus, there's a penalty against Marion Center. Ten-yard penalty will move the ball back to the 30-yard line. And for the first down, and Hankinson will lead them out. We haven't seen them throw the football very much, though. Hankinson will throw this time, throwing over the middle, and the pass is caught by Galantine. Mike Galantine for the first down at the 46-yard line. He juggled it and then hauled it in for the first down. Galantine coming out of the throw, and a, and a good catch by Galantine sets him up for the first down. And circle that play. That could be a big one. First and ten, man in motion to the near side is Galantine this time. Wells, big hole on the right side, is all the way down to the 40-yard line. Pickup of six on the play, second down and four. Marion Center, not a big offensive line. We saw a couple of their offensive linemen getting up slowly after that play. But they're, they're doing a pretty good job in, in that trapping offense, and uh, that time able to open up. They'll send Mike DeHaven to the near side. Pitch the ball that way to Joe Gaston, and Mike Hauser just misses him. Gaston turns the corner and is all the way down to the 28-yard line, maybe the 27, and Bill, that one was oh so close. Boy, it really was. Uh, it looked like Hauser had him in the backfield, almost wrapped him up, but... Uh, They'll lead them out of the huddle. The flanker this time is Mike DeHaven again. The wingback is to the near side. Hankinson gives it to the wing back. That's Mike Galatine, and Galatine is down to the 21-yard line before he is gang-tackled. Hauser, Eric Eamon, and Eric Elliott in on the stop. Two-yard line. Bobcats need a big defensive stand here. Flanker is Ken Steer to the left. The pitch goes to the far side to Wells, trying to get outside, and he will not get outside of Eric Eamon, and Eamon brings him down at the 21. What made that play even more impressive was the fact that Eamon fought off a block. Uh, Alan Gormick got out to the out. Uh, third down now and four. Big play for the Bobcats again. Hankinson gives the ball to the first man through. That is Brock Morgan, and Morgan is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. D.J. Doak hit on the stop. Jess Hauser was there. We see Stocklosa back in the lineup now. Stocklosa is in, and Jason Smith is in at fourth down and four from the 20, from the 19, uh, rather the 20 yard line. Hankinson gives the ball to Wells. Wells turns it up, has the first down, and is all the way down to the 11 yard line. Looks like they might have him at the line of scrimmage, but he skittered through, Bill. Yeah, their backs have been doing a good job of uh, breaking tackles. And uh, that time, Wells able to get through the initial penetration by the Blairsville defense. On a big play again. 5.43 to go. The give is to uh, Buck Morgan, and Morgan is off the right side and down to about the nine-yard line, wrapped up on the play by Elliott and Kunkel. 
Hauser was also there. Yeah, big group. Of Second and eight. The ball is just inside the 10-yard line. They'll flank Mike DeHaven way to the left. He draws single coverage. They give it to Wells coming to the near side. Cuts inside of Brzezanski and is down to about the 8-yard line. Where Brzezanski and Hauser and Kunk will bring him down. Wells made a pretty nice cut that time. He saw that the play was going to be strung uh, back at the start of the drive and picked up the first down. Third down and six. Single receiver to the right. The give is to Buck Morgan, and Morgan will get absolutely nowhere running into the right side of the defensive wall. Mike Hauser made the defensive play right there. Glenn Stuyvesant there as well, but Hauser took on a blocker, fought that off, and then also made the stop for uh, what appeared to be... 4.03 to go in the third quarter. Marion center 12, Blairs will nothing about... Confidence in his offense's ability late in the game to move without timeouts. We saw it before halftime, so he... He felt that the uh, timeout was important here. Hankinson fakes the handoff, looking to throw, being forced to the pocket, and throws, and the pass is caught for a touchdown. Hauled in by Mike Galantine at the goal line, and Bill, I can't believe there wasn't a holding call back there on Brzezanski. That was, one, yeah, you're right. But uh, what a throw by Hankinson. So Hankinson, who was in Brzezanski's sight, and they'll go for two, give the ball to Wells, and Wells is into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And that makes the score 20 to seven with 3.55 to go. Beck will kick off. High and end over end, and it will come down to Christopher at the 25-30. Has a hole in the middle at the 35, and fights his way to the 40-yard line before he is driven back by a host of players, led by Jason Wells. James Stadmiller also on the stop. So the Bobcats have it first and ten. You have to credit Marion Center, though. They drive 62 yards on that play, and they came up with uh, some, some serious, uh, it was a gutsy drive by the Marion Center offense. So we'll see what Freshetti and company can do. Pitch the ball back. This is Kunkel, and he is going to be stacked up by Buck Morgan in the backfield and loses one back to the 39-yard line. Quick pitch to Kunkel, trying to come to the right side, and uh, just no blocking out in front of him. He was wrapped up quickly in the backfield. Loss of one on the play, second down. They'll come out of the huddle now. Brzezanski will line up as the tight end on the near side. Dual receivers to the right. Perchetti will roll that way and look to throw. Throws over the middle, and the pass is almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Ray Vocal at the 45-yard line. Trying to, uh, to get the ball to Mike Clawson again. A 20 to 7 score, 13 points. Pitch to Kunkel, it's the reverse of Brian Christopher, and he has huge blocking in front of him. Christopher across the 50 and down to the 45 yard line. Where Brooks Fairman finally brings him down. I'll tell you what, that was a nice call, and it was beautifully executed. They had everybody out in front of Christopher on that. Uh, they did make the stop, but not before Christopher had the first down. First and 10 for the Bobcats, and the first time we've seen the reverse this year. The pitch is to Kunkel, gets a good block from Kloss and turns it up. Phil breaks the tackle, still on his feet, down to the 31-yard line, where he is finally tripped up by Joe Gaston, who saved the touchdown. You're right, a great block that time by Kloss, and also Brzezanski making a nice block on the play to get him around the corner, and then Kunkel, you're right, he almost broke it. So the Marion Center Stingers on Bill, can you believe it? The next to the last game of the 92 season. It is amazing. It's hard to believe it's going that quickly. Freshetti, the single back is Kunkel. They'll pitch the ball to Greg. Spins off a man at the line of scrimmage, falls forward down to the 29-yard line, and good running all on his own. What strikes me out about that play, and, and it, I've seen it before, is it, he's running almost into the middle of the line or right off the, the tackle. Yeah, it's almost like they, they just toss in the air and let him run into it. The back to an eye formation. Slot man is Clawson to the near side. Everyone else is in sight. They'll go to Christopher on a pitch. Brian trying to get outside, and he will try to get away from Wells, who had a hold of his shirt. Got a and flag. finally, Joe Gaston puts him down, but I think this is going to be a late hit. I think you're right about that. They had him down, and some Marion Center defenders coming up at the end of the play. And it's a personal foul. Looks like Macho Man Savage coming from the top rope there. Boy, if you're Marion Center's coach, you've got to be upset about that because they had him and got to the corner before Christopher did, actually. They'll go in the I formation, dual receivers to the left. They are Wilson and Stiles. 
Marion Center showing blitz. They'll give the ball to Kunkel, and Kunkel runs right into the forward wall. Big Allen Gornick drops him at the line of scrimmage and maybe lost in the yard back to the 19. Yeah, Gornick just stood him up right at the line of scrimmage, and then the rest of the defense coming Trying up. Trying to get it into the end zone and get back in this football game with 20 seconds to play on a turning third period clock. Christopher in motion to the near side. Now dual receivers to the right. And the pass is over the middle for Wilson, and it's intercepted in it. out of Wilson's hands, and Chad Fairman has it, and Fairman's coming up the other way. Fairman up to midfield, still on his feet. Cuts back at the, at the 50, and it's going to be written down there by Kunkel. And Bill, I know Greg Frischetti never saw him, but Mike Hauser broke open in the corner of the end zone just before he passed the football over the middle. Yeah, he was looking for Billy Wilson in the uh, slant play to the post. Uh, Where's Will Seven? Bill and I will be right back. Time Count National Bank, a PNC bank, member FDIC. You're listening to Blairsville Football on Lucky 106.3 FM. Hankinson on first down gives the ball to Wells, and he is going to be dropped by D.J. Doak. A loss of one back to the 49, and a flag goes down also, Bill. That's going to be a holding penalty, I believe, against Marion Center. But uh, if there was, if, and obviously there was holding on the play, but it sure didn't help him. Uh, Wells. He was wrapped up immediately. Bobcats will discuss whether they want to go at second and 11 or first and 20. Bill, how that momentum changed. The Bobcats looking like they were going to take it into the end zone. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's really a, a killer play. They, they drive. Bowser broke open late to the corner. But maybe the coaches in the press box have seen that. And if the Bobcats get the football back, they'll look at it. Blairsville has taken the penalty, so the pitch is to Wells. And Wells turns the corner and is tripped up. Wes Hopkins coming up and making a nice defensive play that time. At the, well. at the 42 yard line, so give him five on the play, make it. Football game at this point. Uh, they still have an opportunity if they can make a defensive stand here. Hankinson will lead them out of the huddle. Gives the ball to the first back through. That is Buck Morgan, and Morgan fights his way across the 45 and out to the 47 yard line. Greg Kunkel hung on for dear life and finally wrestled him to the turf. The football over on down. Hankinson on third and long, inside handoff. This is Mike Galantine, and Galantine has the first down. And into the secondary, it's a foot race to the end zone, and Galantine is going to outrun Styles for the touchdown. Another big third down play, Bill. Yeah, third and long, too. That's been the situation tonight, especially uh, in this period. The right side. Uh, but it didn't appear to be anything at first, and then uh, Galantine's speed uh, breaking through the secondary, and then it was just a foot race, as you said, and he outran the, the secondary. Beck's kick is up and good. So Dan Speck converts to make the score. And Bill, as Chester A. Riley would say, what a revolt development we've seen here. It was the, the low kick into the defender play. Beck will kick off at 27-7. Short kick, and it will be taken by Christopher, who allows it to bounce at the 25, and now Brian is in trouble and run out of bounds at the 22-yard line. But again, uh, you had a team, uh, you had Marion Center, what, uh, second and 17 or something like that, and so defense uh, giving up the big plays, especially in the ground. Offensively, Greg Fraschetti will send three receivers to the left. Brzezanski is split to the right. The lone setback is Kunkel. And now Kunkel will come in motion to that side. They'll throw the ball out into the flat. The play is read beautifully by Ray Vocal, who almost intercepted the ball. And you're, you're right. Vocal knew exactly what was going on with that play, trying to get the football out to uh, the flat. Clawson and Hauser will come to the near side. Brzezanski lines up as the tight end. The backs are in an eye. Perchetti drops back and looks to throw, and it passes complete to Mike Hauser. And Hauser will be wrestled out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Nice throw by Bruschetti. Uh, just a down-and-out pattern to the sideline by Hauser. Bruschetti just... A touchdown or even two field goals suddenly becomes an uphill battle. Two receivers now to the short side of the field. High formation. Bruschetti will throw. The blitz is on. Bruschetti with some good time. It throws oh. the ball right into the hands of Wells. And Wells is going to go for a touchdown for Marion Center. The wheels are falling off the cart right now, Ben. It 
it was not necessarily a case of Wells. Well, maybe he did. He in the pass was above him and right into the hands of Wells. And he had nothing but pasture from here all the way down to CR Motors. <laughs> Beck with the extra point. The ball is down. Speck's kick is up. And it is good. So Speck makes it 30. And if you think back, uh, right... to kick off. Short kick. Kunkel will take it at the 35-40. Burrows his way to the 42-yard line. Shane Statmiller will make the stop. And just recapping that play again, it was Prochetti dropping back. He was looking for the screen as you said. 32 yard line for the Bobcats as Prochetti will send Kunkel as a lone setback. Three receivers to the left and Brzezanski to the right. The pitches to Kunkel. Kunkel turns it upfield, good running room across midfield, has the first down, and is down to the 46-yard line of Marion Center, where Wells trips him up, and Bill, that's been their best play of the evening. Yeah, that was a nice cut, too, by uh, Greg Kunkel. Good choice to cut back into that hole, following Jason Smith into the, uh, into the line, and uh, picking up the first down. They pick up the first down, and then uh, they have some difficulty. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. They're in Stinger territory. Trips to the left. Fake to Kunkel, Prochetti will throw, get good protection, throws over the middle and over Brzezanski's head at the 32-yard line. Brzezanski in the middle of the field, uh, coming from the tight end position, the ball was just thrown a little bit too high. A second down situation in 10. Second and 10, three receivers to the right, one to the left, pitch to Kunkel to the right, needs to turn the corner, needs a block, didn't get it. He gets down to the 44-yard line to pick up a three, second and seven, a third and seven. And a great open field tackle that time by Jason Wells. Uh, we've seen him do just about everything tonight for the Stingers. He's a, he's a referee signaling for it to start. Still not going as the pitch comes to Perchetti. And Perchetti will take the ball down to the 46-yard line, and we have a clock problem now. The officials are wondering the same thing you were. Watson will go to the right, Styles to the left, Kunkel in the slot position, Perchetti on the option, looking to pitch it back to Christopher, Christopher has it, trying to turn the corner, jukes his way toward the first down, and I think he has it at the 35-yard line, Bill. And he, 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 depending on the spot, he would have to have it where they, they're spotting the football, in fact, they're moving it. Really mean <laughs> something, I'm not sure. 7.56 to play. He's a basketball coach. I'm used to seeing his numbers always go off quickly when you're winning. Well, uh, this is Christopher in motion on the near side. They give it to Kunkel galloping like Red Grange across the 30-yard line and down or across the 35 and down to the 34 where he goes down in the arms of Shane Kunkel. Flag in late, too. It looks like it's going to be a face mask against uh, Marion Center. We'll take all the help we can get. <laughs> Greg Bruschetti goes over and that's Kunkel on the head. <laughs> Way to go as a pair of Kunkels collide there. Crowd just about everybody in the school <laughs> last week. There was no one left on the sidelines when they were uh, out on the field. Spread formation. The pitch is to Christopher. It's over his head, loose on the turf. Still loose and finally recovered by Marion Center. Joe Gaston falls on the football, and again, the Bobcats shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, they have first and 10 on their own 20. We'll call it the 23 yard line. Ken Steer will go flank to the far side. The wing back is also on that side. The pitch comes to the near side. Gasson trying to get around Eric Eman, but Eman strings it out long enough for Jeff Hauser to catch the play and make the stop. Eric Elliott also coming up on the stop as well. Uh, but you're right, uh, Eman is the man who strung it out. The Blairsville band doing the tomahawk chop now. Maybe it's the Bobcat Claw. It could be. Inside handoff is to Chad Fairman, and Fairman runs right into a brick wall that we know is Dwight Herman. Well, Brett Ewing coming up, too, from the cornerback spot. Ewing read that very well. Uh, saw the wingback uh, counter coming and uh, stepped into it, and he and Herman... Uh, the line moved ahead by him. <laughs> Third down and three now from the 31. Can the Bobcats force the first punt of the night? From Marion Center. They give it to the first back through. That is Joe Gaston, and he is hit and dropped by Jason Smith. 
back at the 29-yard line. Nice job by Jason Smith getting uh, into the backfield. And Gaston had nowhere to go in that play. So that'll bring out fourth down, and we'll finally get to see the Mike Galantine in a pair and punt formation. But the Bobcats sending now Michael Clawson deep. He'll deploy at his own 45. Bobcats have the rush on. They're coming after it. It's a high snap, and they blocked the kick. The kick is blocked. And it is picked up. Brett Ewing. And Brett Ewing is in the end zone for a touchdown. Dwight Herman's the player that blocked it. Great job by Dwight Herman coming straight up the gut. And Brett Ewing is in for the touchdown on the block punt. They said everybody and their brother. And Dwight Herman knocked it back. The touchdown. 440 to play, and the Bobcats have to close to within 21 points now, and they'll take it right back. They use the recording of the Braves fans doing that for the Steelers practice this week so they can get used to it for Arrowhead Stadium. Oh, yes. And, and they, they will be seeing a lot of it this weekend. High formation now as the Bobcats go for two. Power eye. Fake to Christopher, and the pass is complete to Brzezinski in the end zone. A nice fake by Greg Fruschetti. Absolutely. That works because of the Fruschetti fake. Uh, it looked like they were rolling right with uh, Greg Kunkel. Uh, Fruschetti just kept the football on his hip. Now who's on the front line now? It's Ray Vogel, Mike Gallantine, Chad Fairman. They're all up on the front line. Hauser will kick it off. Hauser with a line drive, the small kick again. And Buck Morgan will fall on it at the 49-yard uh, line. So Bradley Smith taking no chances with that one. Absolutely. Full first down, run off the clock. Now the referee's blowing the whistle. Let's see. Have, uh, one of the little boys, maybe a son of the coach or a brother of one of the players or something, run out in the field and pick them up. The give is to Wells, and he will run into Hauser. Flags are down. It bounces off of Hauser. Styles finishes him off. The football's loose, but he'll be ruled down. There's a flag on the play as well. I'm not sure if it was a face mask or whether it's going to go against uh, Marion Center. They have a holding penalty. Holding against the uh, Marion Center Stinger. And a personal foul against the Bobcats. Now, this should be interesting. Uh, holding is the call. Moves the penalty back to the... 35-yard line. Now they'll come back 15 yards, and actually the um, Stingers are going to pick up a yard on this. Personal foul against Blair. And if you believe that, I'll tell you another one. And Tory sending uh, Bill Wilson in to play nose guard for Dwight Herman. Right at the, uh, right at, as the play started, almost. Joe Gaston takes the handoff, cuts up field, eludes the tackle, and is down to the 44-yard line of the Bobcats, where Brett Ewing finally wrestles him to the turf. And it looked like Gaston was stopped in the backfield, as they, although it did turn out for them. Uh, they gave up a fumble that uh, killed what appeared to be a, a drive they had going. They give up the middle to Buck Morgan, and he has the first down all the way down to the 39-yard line. Norberg and Hopkins in on the stop. First down for Marion Center. We are back at Blairsville Stadium. First and 10 for the Marion Center Stingers. And the give is to Gaston, and Gaston turns the corner, has good running room out to the outside, 30, 25, a foot race, and he will win it into the end zone. 44-yard touchdown run. Or rather, we'll make it, we'll call it a 30. Wrapped up in the backfield almost. Got to the outside, outran Neil Norberg, or Neil Norberg to the side. And now Speck will try for the conversion at the post to the right. All sorts of confusion on the Marion Center side of the field. They've got guys signaling timeout, guys not signaling, guys coming on. Played well during the middle of the season and held them in a few games. Mm -hmm. The ball is down, Speck's kick is up, and it is through the uprights and good. Big play. 30-yard longer run uh, center in that, in that brief period in a game that uh, Blairsville was, was in, really, until the, the fourth quarter. This is Brian Christopher at the 30. And Christopher strung up at the 34-yard line. Fats Miller will make the tackle again. He's the designated kickoff tackler. And now some extracurricular activity and yellow hankies all over the football field.
but uh, things quickly settle down and everyone heads off the field now, which was really not anything, and that's a credit to the official. Yeah, and the penalty is against Marion Center for unsportsmanlike conduct. Personal foul, and the, and the player is ejected. He didn't see who the, who the number was that was ejected, but he was ejected for the personal foul, hitting Christopher Late. 2.59 to go, 41 to 15. The Bobcats trail it. And if you look at this scoreboard, those of you tuning in later, maybe pick up the newspaper tomorrow morning and think, gee, the Bobcats weren't ever in it. This is Clawson taking the pass. He's going to throw it long for Styles. He's wide open, and the pass is five yards over his head. An incomplete for Clawson, who is the backup quarterback with Joel Smith lost for the season. Who's coming on as one of their top players. They're playing without Sigafoos, who is out for the rest of the year without with Mono. They lost Jim Fritz a while ago. Ryan Morningstar is out. The pass is to Hauser. He will run it this time. Hauser across midfield and down to the 42-yard line. Shy of a first down, brought down by Jim Kirk, who comes down from the Starship Enterprise <laughs> to make the tackle. <laughs> captain. All right, I can't stop him any longer, Captain. Bobcats will go out of the I formation, now shifting into the slot is Kunkel. Crescetti will roll to the right and look to throw. Throws complete to Styles. No, in and out of his hands at the 30-yard line. Styles ran a hook pattern that time. Uh, we will go to the right. Brzezinski, the tight end on the near side. They'll go out of the I formation on fourth and two. They give it to Kunkel. He has the first down and is down inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. Jeremy Fairman will make the stop. So the Bobcats move the sticks, and, and, and Bill, once again, the Bobcats... Right before halftime. Fake to Christopher Perchetti will throw. Going long for Styles in the end zone, and the pass is caught for a touchdown. A nice play by Styles, and he beat Brian Miller, who didn't know whether to take his lunch or walk to work. That's a little bit of redemption there for Styles. Uh, he had a pass that uh, he had in his hands from Perchetti just a little bit of a wave of acknowledgement to Chad Fairman. Fairman, of course, uh, was the guy that Styles was battling all night uh, in the secondary as uh, Greg Kunkel has the two-point conversion. Kunkel runs it in to make it 41-23 with a minute 36 to go. But it was just a case of Styles running over and uh, finding Fairman on the side. It was all over him. Yeah, good coverage. Good coverage in the far side. It was just uh, Styles out outmaneuvered him for the football. Hauser will kick off, and we'll see which of the variety of onside kick plays the Bobcats will employ. With 1.36 to play, there's the whistle. They'll bring everybody to the near side. The ball takes a high bounce. It's loose on the on the turf. They'll all pass for it, and I think we've got nope. it again. No. Nope. nope. Marion Center has the football. Bobcat the had it temporarily. Emily flags go down. Did you notice who was kicking that? Dwight Herman. The Bobcats are going to be called for unsportsmanlike conduct. There's the ball at the 49-yard line with a minute 30 to play. The personal fouls were offsetting, and both men were thrown out. So now the referees will align. And Hankinson will drop back and fall on one knee at his own 48-yard line just to get the clock in motion, and it's unlikely that the Bobcats will stop it. And the clock will creep. Right at the uh, end of the third quarter, right at the start of the fourth. Hankinson will drop back again, and he is hit on the play by J.D. Hogger, who makes the stop with 47 seconds left. And Bill, if you go back to the excitement at the end of the first half, and the yep. Bobcats had the momentum. Then coming out in the second half and then trying that onside kick and getting it. Uh, they had possession of the football to start the second half and uh, looked like they were driving for a while. Uh, it didn't pan out for them, but uh, the third period, for the most part, was close. Hankinson falls on the ball again, and penalty flags go down again at 19 seconds. Yeah, we've got to get this game over with now. Some frustration, and, and, and Bill, the, the thing that worries me about what is occurring now, I believe there may be another Bobcat player ejected. Oh. Wow. So that moves the football all the way down to the 24-yard line with 17 seconds to go. 
and the Marion Center Stingers will not have to run another play. They'll take over 41-23 win. We go to 6-2 and two on the Appalachian Conference season. The Bobcats fall to 2-4-2. Two, and two. And that's it. The football game is all over. The final score, Marion Center 41, Blairsville 23. Bill and I will be back to recap tonight's game right after this. While the other car dealers are telling you how big they are, Bonarico is quietly making more deals with more satisfied customers than at any time in their 50-year history. How's this for selection? Ford, Mercury, Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth. A big inventory of trucks and a lot full of good quality used cars. The Bonarico dealership has been owned by the same family all these years, so you can be sure that you'll be treated like one of the family. Today, get selection and service at Bonarico in Blairsville. Bonarico is open 9 to 8, Monday through Thursday, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 8. Are you prepared? Get all of your Halloween needs at Blairsville Pharmacy. Blairsville Pharmacy saves you.